All right, just making sure we're good here. Um, so I'm Heather, uh, hopefully uh, we've interacted before. If not, um, I uh, work on the MATLAB product management team in the area of data science. And I'm joined by Connell. Hello Thanks. everyone, uh, I'm right here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Connell D'Souza. I've been working at the MATWorks for about four years now. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer by profession, so not someone that's typically writing code, but um, hey, you know what, MATLAB helped me become a programmer and now, you know, from being someone that hated coding to someone that's working in MATLAB marketing right now, I guess it's a pretty, it's pretty, good, uh, pretty good jump, <laughs> right? Uh, yep, definitely. <laughs> Same here, actually. I mean, I, I tried a whole bunch of different languages and dropped out of every programming course possible, but whenever I started, <laughs> started using MATLAB, I'm like, oh. Okay, I could do this. So hopefully we can give you that same experience. Um, we're gonna use a lot of examples. So we mentioned that this is very practical. Um, and you know, basically the, th the theme is gonna be, you know, try things. You know, it's no longer a world where you're just looking at this blinking cursor trying to figure out what code to type. You know, you can click around, try stuff, uh, basically use examples, that's what we do. We Google it and copy and paste, right? Um, at least I do, I don't know what you kind of. Um, <laughs> well, hey, Google, Google's, Google's everything. Google's We're engineers. We're practical. <laughs> Come on. Um, and then we'll talk about some of the things that will help you just remember what's going on. You know, so even as you try these examples, just remembering what the fundamental sort of philosophies and the way that the language is working behind the scenes, that'll really help you. And then we'll talk about some specifics that you'll run into a bunch, like doing math. I forgot. That you, anyway. Um, that was supposed to be make Connell laugh, but now you know, well, it made it. me laugh. <laughs> Good. Hopefully, you can all do that. We'll do we'll do some math. We'll get yeah. to doing math for sure. Doing math is fun. It's the Gives best. Sleepless nights, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're in grad school. Oh, wow. um, so to get started, we just I wanted to point out, you know, even if you have no MATLAB access, you've never downloaded it, or you you know whatever it is, you don't have a license or anything like that, you don't actually need one. Um, nowadays, you can actually just go right to the documentation, just mathworks.com slash help, like help me. Uh, and you can actually just click on some examples and start right away. And you can find them and run in browser. Um, so for example, let's pick a couple, uh, I had a good one here. Where was it? It was about pre-processing. So I feel like um, data stuff is really important. Right. So a lot of people work in MATLAB either with signal data, like sensor data or, you know, spreadsheet types or, you know, uh, text files, those kinds of things. And so as you see, I'm scrolling quick, pretty quickly because I wanted to find my example. Um, but you can see there's so many different things that you can get started with. You know, if you're, you know, reading data from Arduino or different kinds of ports, working with big data. Uh, so, you know, you, this is a good place to start anyway. Just try to figure out what you want to do and find the example. Yeah, I, I think I think I think we, we we cannot stress enough how you know th there are a lot of MATLAB users in the world. So so whatever you're trying to do has been done before, right? Don't you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Look at the documentation. Look up file exchange. We'll talk about file exchange a little later. But yeah. uh, uh, good places to, to get started. That, 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 that's what I get started. I don't like writing code. I like to use someone else's work. So exactly. <laughs> and I'm I'm sort of the one that I don't tend to take a course first, and then I just I sort of do it, and then maybe sure. I take a course yeah. to fill in all the gaps. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, later on, you know. Um, so this is a great way to start. So you can actually just open this right away. And so for me, it says um, open in MATLAB online because I have a license and I'm signed in. So if you have access, you'll, it'll open in a full MATLAB online. But if you don't, it'll just run right in the browser. So you might not get that full, you know, with the workspace and things like that, but you'll get to run the example. You can try out some code. You can, you know, I don't know, just try things out and mm -hmm. uh, change it around and learn without having to do anything else. But again, if you if you have a license, like through your university or um, MATLAB Home or your um, workplace, you can uh, use the full featured MATLAB online. And so this is just through the browser. This is just Chrome. Um, and it went right to my example that I wanted to show. Uh, so let's just go ahead and run it. I mean, without having to go through all this stuff, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, I think. <laughs> um, this is a section, so we're gonna run this section. All right, cool. Uh, and like I said, even if you didn't have a MATLAB license or have never used it before, you can just run it right in the browser like this. So let's take a quick look at what we're looking at. So first, we'll talk a little bit more about importing uh, data, but this is a data file that was created in MATLAB. So .mat, that's a, a sort of binary format 
file that you can read and write efficiently in MATLAB. So that's what that is. And we'll, again, we'll talk more about files later. And then um, I'm just going to kind of go line by line here to kind of explain what's going on. I think it's helpful. I'm also going to minimize this. So that's what we did here. We just loaded this in. We can click on it, and it just brings it right in. No big deal. Um, here, we're creating a vector. So this colon operator is just going, it's saying to give me a vector that goes from one to whatever the length of speed is. And so uh, that's one thing that's really important in MATLAB. You know, the one, well, it's MATLAB. It's the matrix laboratory. Matrix laboratory, yep. <laughs> so that's kind of a hint to how things are assumed in the background. Um, you know, because everything's a matrix. Even a scalar, you can see here, it's a one by one, right? So um, that's something to keep in mind. And so we're always creating vectors. We're using vectors and matrices. So let's say we wanted to just create, you know, something like this, one through 10. That's sort of the, the colon ob object just does that. It assumes, you know, one, a spacing of one. You know, you could also, you know, change it up a little bit, maybe something like this. So um, that gives you, you know, sort of your baseline. A lot of times, especially if you're doing mathematics and your algebra, you know, uh, numerical methods and things, you need to sometimes create your own uh, vectors and matrices. <laughs> so that's the good way to do it. And even when indexing, we'll see that this will be really useful. Yeah, I, I think I think the other thing to note is, and this is this is typically for for the new MATLAB users. You, you don't need to declare, you know, you don't need to declare the variable types and stuff like that. You just say a equals one to whatever, and you're good to go. You know, which is exactly. a good thing about C because I, I I hate the syntax. I hate the in whatever. You know, like it it doesn't make sense in my head. So right, <laughs> exactly. And you don't have to. You just start right away. Yeah. Um, and then you can deal with it later. <laughs> like, we'll see, you know, maybe there is, you know, some things we need to think about and, you know, it'll help you along the way. You don't have to just start by typing a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so so we have a vector, right? So let's go back uh, to our X. And so let's say, um, because we have a lot of signal people, signal processing uh, kind of stuff, maybe we want to do, uh, take the sign of this vector. So maybe we want we did from like zero to two pi, you know, something like that. So it's something that's important um, in MATLAB, you know, a lot of you have these arrays or you know vectors matrices, the functions oftentimes will operate on the entire thing. And so, so that's sort of one of the fundamental things I think to keep in mind that you know you I guess if whenever you're tending, especially if you're coming from other languages, if you're tending to write a lot of for loops, you know, oftentimes you just need to pass in the array itself. You don't need to go through all that. So we call it vectorization, yeah. uh, so to speak. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's almost like if you're if you're writing for loops in MATLAB, more often than not, you're not doing it right. Uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a good it's, it's a good assumption to make. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so let's do something a little bit more tangible. You know, this is a good example. It also shows how to run um, or how to call functions, basically. So this is one thing I liked about it. I think like uh, Connell mentioned, I don't have to start with like hit headers and integer things or whatever. Um, you know, it's just like math, basically. Um, so, you know, it's or like Excel or whatever, if you've used that before, you know, you just call the function, pass in the uh, data that you want to operate on. Um, so, again, just kind of giving you a sense of how things work so that you, you know, get used to it. So we're bringing, we're working on this wind data in this example. So let's just take a look. So we have um, our MATLAB workspace. So this is where our you know, variables that we're working on are stored. And we have our direction, humidity, you know, different things about the wind. So uh, let's say we want to try to add some of these things together or do some math. We are, we're getting to doing math already. <laughs> um, jump so, in a few steps ahead. That's right. That's right. We're, we're going to jump around a lot. Trust me. <laughs> um, so let's say like we have an equation that adds these two things together. All right, let's just try it. So um, direction and humidity were both uh, 186 by one vectors we get back a vector of the same size. And so again, that's kind of how things work. If you're operating on things together like that, you're gonna you know, expect uh, the same kind of size, at least for many of these operators. Um, let's try a couple others. So um, maybe, let's see, we got, I don't know. I'm gonna do it on purpose so I get an error, I think. Okay, <laughs> so I tried to take C, which is this 186, one by 186, an X, which is one by 19. And so this is sort of a, I guess, linear algebra violation. You know, you need these things to line up or have the same elements. Um, so we could get into linear algebra, I, I love it. Um, but we'll just kind of talk about enough to get you 
uh, through, basically. Um, so just keep those assumptions in mind. You know, if you're adding and subtracting, even multiplication, you usually want those things to be the same size. Um, matrix multiplication, I guess, would be the one exception. Um, so again, it's something to keep in mind. We, <laughs> Connell and I were talking about some of the most common errors, and this is definitely one of the most common ones. It, it, it's, it's the most frustrating one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and I think it happens a lot too, at least for me, whenever you are, uh, say you're bringing in data from like a web service or something else, or you're uh, loading a map file that has a different arrangement, like 186 by one versus one, you know, one by 186. So, uh, you know, those are cases where you need to keep this in mind, you might find those errors, or um, you could, let's see, let's try another one. Let's see, mean speed. Mm, this one. There we go. <laughs> so um, what happened? So if we look at A and S, that's the default variable. Um, it's now a 186 by 186. And so what happened is I was trying to subtract, if we go back, hit the up arrow, that shows our last typed um, syntax. So we tried to subtract a 186 by one from a 180, one by 186. And so it's basically like this, right? So if you'd used MATLAB a long time ago, you would have gotten that error. Um, now we actually understand that, you know, people often want to do that in a mathematical way. So uh, it'll expand. So that's just something to keep in mind. You know, I think this is, you know, some people want that in a mathematical way. Other times you might just be trying to, um, you know, actually do it this way, but it's it's giving you something uh, that's wrong. So you might get an error or you might get a, a weird matrix that you weren't expecting. Um, but one thing to do is just use a transpose. So that was, you know, that'll just straighten it out. <laughs> so fl flip the dimensions, basically. So, uh, so Heather, so, so uh, another thing that 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 I use pretty often is is the dot operator. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and and how that how that affects matrix computations? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the dot operator. So uh, Connell mentioned uh, this would be something like all right, let's go back to our x and y, right? So we mentioned something like that. It's array or no element by element, right? But so if we did something like uh, like we just did the, the you know, c minus x, x or the um, x say times y and so you know we're getting some kind of we're getting this error it's incorrect dimensions I, I don't know what's going on why is this happening i just wanted to you know do the elements by x by the elements by y well what i can do is just use this little dot and that tells it to just no no, no go element by element don't try to do um you know linear algebra modification so that's yeah, so Go ahead, so, sorry. So, so this is something that that, 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 that you'd use a follow up for typically, right? It, it, it saves you that, that that entire extra chunk of code, extra chunk of processing time. Yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and so that's something to just keep in mind you know, the plus minus, those are, you know, uh, element wise anyway, but, you know, multiplication, division, and, um, you know, uh, exponent is uh, something you might need to use the dot for. And if you'd seen that, you might, that at least makes sense to you now. Yeah. It's 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 also if if you're if you're ever on campus and you get that MATLAB T-shirt that says x a, a equals to x dot y x dot backslash y, uh, that's that that's where it comes from. No, I understand the <laughs> translation of our swag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect. Um, all right, let's try a couple more things just to get a sense of things, and then we'll we'll pause for some questions. Um, so one more, let's try you know something we might want to actually do is take the mean speed and speed. And so it's giving me this error. Again, I just try things. I don't think about it first sometimes. Um, but you know, the errors should help you and they tell you what to do. So it says here, these are just integers and doubles. What the heck are they talking about? They, MATLAB developers, I guess. <laughs> um, and it looks like, yeah, sure enough, this is an int 32 and a double. So that's just something to keep in mind, another common one that you might run into. Uh, the default in MATLAB is a double. Uh, precision. So that's a floating point if you're coming from other languages. And um, I mean, it's pretty easy to like fix. So which one was speed? That's an in 32. We can make that a double just by calling the you know same kind of way that we did before. No problem. Or we could make the other just in 32. Um, so it's just something to think about, you know, again, you know, sometimes, especially when you're working with hardware, you know, some of the defaults will come in uh, with different precisions. So you know, hopefully, again, the errors will help you. Uh, and keep in mind, the default is a double. So uh, we, 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 
We've got a question in the chat. Uh, it's a, okay. The question is, uh, how do we check if a vector's uh, if a vector contains invalid data? So you know, say it's got NAND characters or or empty spaces and stuff like that. Uh, That's a good one. That's a great one. So there's a couple of ways. Um, if if it is specifically to NAND, you can use is NAND. Um, so that would be something like this, and you get a logical array back. There's also, um, since NAN is specific to numeric data, it's you know, not a number. So uh, there's also is missing. So that is more generic for um, the, you know, any data type, you know, categorical strings, anything. So that'll encompass a lot of it. And actually we'll, we'll uh, pause on that because I want to show a couple of cool um, little app things that you can use uh, to help deal with missing data. Because there's also really nice things like RM missing um, and notice even these little pop-ups that are coming up, you know, it'll help you out. So again, if you'd use MATLAB like a long time ago, like me, it was like tilde is nan, like totally weird looking code. Now you can just yeah. RM missing or fill missing. So great question. We'll come back to that one too. And, and the, the other thing I wanted to point out, just the, you, you kept using the the, uh, the tab button to, 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 to autocomplete. So it, that, that's another cool tip and trick. I mean, I, I, I use that all the time. I, I, yeah. I can never remember function names. So just hit the tab button. It'll give you a list of functions that are available. And you should exactly. And a lot of times it'll even pop up like in MATLAB online and using the live editor, it'll even just pop up for you and you can type things in and it'll show you what kind of stuff, you know, what, how the function looks. And so that's actually, we should talk a little bit about the documentation. We'll, we'll come back to that in a second, but um, yeah, again, very, very helpful. You don't have to just, you know, start from scratch and you're, Blinking cursor. Um, one, uh, let's see. Anything else I wanted to add? Um, I guess we could we should talk a little bit about plotting. So um, it's very similar to the uh, you know assumptions that we're talking about with array versus matrices and things like that. You know, if you're plotting something, you want these to be the same size. Otherwise, you'll get an error. Some some plots are different than others. You know, we'll we'll talk more about exploring those. Um, but here we're actually plotting you know x y x2, y2. And so it's showing up as, let me get that under control here. Yeah, so it's showing up with two plots on it. You could also even have passed the, like a matrix of that and it would show up with three lines or four lines or however many, um, you know, columns you have. So uh, another thing, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about the documentation, but there are a lot of options here. I'll even type in a couple and you can hopefully see some of these options. <laughs> Let's see, here we go. So you can change, you know, the markers and the line width, things like that. Uh, let's see. Ooh, all right, pentagram, that sounds fun. You know, so I, I think, again, we're kind of going back to uh, what's the best way to get started. To get a doc example and just try stuff, honestly. And you'll, you'll really get to know things. And if, especially if you have a problem that you want to solve, you know, I, I think there's plenty of things that will help you get that, get that far and then you can learn along the way. And of course we'll share resources in the end for more formal trainings and things like that. Um, a couple other things. So uh, here it's showing move median. Actually, I did wanna make a matrix. So we don't have any matrices here. So let's, uh, let's do something like this. Let's concatenate these. So let's say our direction, humidity and speed, there we go. So um, because, you know, again, kind of a similar uh, point earlier, you know, these need to be the same size. So if you look, my measurement or mesh vector uh, is now you know, 186 by three. So it now has three columns. You can click on it. That's the other uh, nice thing about, um, you know, start getting started with MATLAB. You just, just click on things, you know, and uh, it'll help you out. We'll, we'll talk more about that too. So uh, now we have all, all three columns together. So uh, let's say we wanted to do some calculations. You know, we showed a little bit on the operators, but say we wanted to take the mean of the measurements. So it gave us three um, answers. So it's actually because um, of the way that people tend to work in MATLAB a lot of times, and it's you know, matrix based, many functions work you know, linear algebra wise on the entire matrix. And some of these statistical functions, we know that you want a summary. You know, you really just expect one line in the end, right? And so it'll give you one for each column. And then oftentimes you have uh, a um, thing that you can select for the dimension. So uh, this dim, you could say two, and that would give you 
uh, the other direction. So if you wanted the mean of all the rows. So those are, again, kind of the fundamental things that you want to keep in mind. You know, say you're building up some big equation for um, your calculations. You know, these are just uh, pointers about how the way uh, things work. So um, uh, Heather, <laughs> yeah. just stop it real quick there. We've got a couple mm -hmm. of questions in the chat. Uh, so uh, sure. someone was asking about the about that conversion from in 32 to double that he just did earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think you just need a clarification on that. Sure. Yeah. So um, I had uh, earlier I had subtracted the um, I tried to subtract a double from an integer. So um, especially in, you know, this, I guess these are things that I don't want to think about as a MATLAB user sometimes. But you know, integer math is different. Like the, you know, you have uh, different precision. You have much uh, more limited mathematics that you are able to do on it. And a double has the most options, I guess. I think at least in MATLAB. And so, whenever you're working on uh, in, in MATLAB, at least you um, need to operate with the same data type. So um, in our cases, let's see if it actually shows up here. The sorry, I was trying to look at the um, size. No, okay. Um, but you get, the integers are um, much less uh, overhead as far as you know how many bytes that it takes up. So a lot of times when you're working with hardware, you you tend to want an audio and things like that. You tend to want to uh, keep it at a very minimal overhead and like a lower precision, like or the it 32 or it 16. Um, and then you know uh, double again, that's the default. So you can convert back and forth either way. So I just showed uh, converting one, I think. So you notice there's in 32, in 16, you can see all of the different options. Um, but basically you just pass the uh, you know, vector in or array or matrix and then it'll change the type. So you, the type casting um, is just basically like any other function, you can double string, um, you know, int, whatever, <laughs> single, those kinds of things. And we we, we we have we have another question which actually leads into the next part of our of, of our of our session today. So uh, there's a question on how do we work with large CSV files in MATLAB. So I think I think that's right on for what what, what we've got coming up next. <laughs> exactly, that's perfect actually. Yeah. So um, we'll yeah we'll finish this up. I just wanted to work with this script just a little bit longer, um, just to show one more thing, and then we'll talk about file importing and uh, doing that kind of data analysis into the fun stuff, I guess. Um, so there's a couple of parts. I'm going to run through this just real quick. Um, so we were trying to do a smoothing here. We're doing a moving median. Um, if we aren't sure, sorry, I'm jumping around here. So this moving median has a lot of options. <laughs> OK, so you have, well, moving, I guess if you were using the smooth uh, function, it has different options for your um, how you want to deal with the smoothing. Right, so um, we have now what's called a live editor task. So for things like smoothing, um, you know, different change point detections, uh, and a lot of things like synchronizing, joining tables, uh, some of the headaches I think whenever you're working with data. So um, we could just you know basically take whatever we want here. Let's uh, speed. And if we want to use the moving mean, uh, we can see what that might do to our data. So this is one thing that's really nice. You don't have to start with the math or start with the theory. You can start with your data or start with your knowledge already and then see what might be appropriate. So actually, you know, I wanted to use moving media and let's make sure that looks good. Cool. Um, and then you actually have the code. So that's one really nice thing. We'll probably point out a bunch is that, you know, a lot of you don't have to actually start with typing things. You just, you know, uh, click on stuff, try that, try stuff, you know, look at the tab, try these things, and then um, you can, you know, use the code from there. All right, so uh, last thing I wanted to mention, we've been using MATLAB online. <laughs> this was all just from that one example that I just clicked open. Um, since I had shared it, uh, or I had, sorry, I had changed something, um, I might wanna share this, you know, so I'm working with Connell. I might wanna just, you know, send him what I've got. Uh, so there's different ways, obviously people use GitHub, you could go to that um, extend, use different um, source control and things like that. Uh, but you can also write from Malab online, just take the entire directory and uh, share it. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I could create a link and I'll do that. Um, all right, you can use this link. So you should be able to find my example now. 
So I can just copy it. <laughs> go ahead, go for it. It's awesome. Um, so I copy it, send it to my friends, send it to like all of YouTube, like I just did. And uh, then, you know, Connor will be able to see the nice uh, thing that I added here with the live task. And so we have been using MATLAB online. So let's, oh, geez, don't look at my desktop. <laughs> let's actually go to the MATLAB desktop. So this is, you know, assuming I had installed it, you know, that I didn't have to install anything. And that's also the most, always the most recent version. If you have, you know, an old version or you haven't used it in a long time, you know, you can always check it out uh, there. That's the latest and greatest. Okay. Um, so uh, we've we've got a question talking about deleting single variables from the workspace. So how, how would you Ooh. how would you delete a single variable from the workspace? Um, Great question. Since you already have that open. There. Might as well. Yeah, I'll go back here. So um, one thing um, clear is you could it would just if I take clear it'll clear absolutely everything. Uh, you could actually just right click and uh, delete one individually, but if you just type clear and then that variable, and then you can even keep stringing those along if there are certain ones, that'll take care of it. Um, so, you know, that's that's very handy. And then again, if I just said clear, that would just clear the whole workspace. Cool. So um, I also, I, now that I'm in the workspace or in my desktop, I wanted to point out I have MATLAB drive installed. So if I wanted to go back to that example, I easily could, um, I think, here that's the wrong one <laughs> all right so i could easily or i could follow my own link i suppose <laughs> um, so uh we want, are there any other questions before we jump ahead or carry we, on we, we, we've got a couple of questions on plotting uh but I, oh, okay. I, I i think we want to talk about it once we actually have some variables in the workspace because we can sort of show the uh the the, the plotting tool script which i love absolutely definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay cool Awesome. So one thing you might notice, this is um, black and dark, which I like. Uh, so this is, there are preferences. Like if you just go to the tool strip, you know, this is where I say, like, just click around, like just try stuff. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, make mistakes. It's the way it goes. Uh, we, you can change the colors if you prefer a magenta background, um, like sometimes I do. Uh, right now I'm just going back to the defaults um, just so I don't hurt your eyes much. Uh, but you can change a lot of things here, even, you know, the font sizes, you know, this is where, you know, a lot of your accessibility kind of things come in and, you know, any assumptions that you want to do, like the display, like lots of things can be uh, found here. So uh, just one other thing I wanted to point out to you while I'm talking about the tool strip, you know, if you want to, we, we showed using a doc example, so we're going to do the same thing again. Um, but this is where you can find, you know, uh, Connell mentioned about how many people um, contribute in the whole world or millions and millions of MATLAB users. So you can find their code and steal it and start with that. It's not stealing. There's good licenses for it. Um, so if you use add-ons, I just clicked from here. You can um, start right away. This is also what you would see from the file exchange or the MathWorks GitHub. Uh, many of these are also on the GitHub um, repo. So uh, you know you can search around, try to find, you know, even hey, get started with MATLAB. Here are a couple examples I could use, and then you just install it right away. It just adds it right to your uh, MATLAB. Um, path, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So another good place, and I should probably point out here too, that there's Learn MATLAB and other resources that we were talking about right here just from the tool strip. So, you know, you can take more formal trainings that aren't just me and Connell being like, wow, well, whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, we'll also share the link in um, the chat because there are some really wonderful two-hour um, courses that get you started with MATLAB, a Simulink with deep learning, machine learning, really wonderful. All right, let's find another example. Um, I think a lot of people in MATLAB, t I think, well, Connell, correct me if I'm wrong, tend to use time stamped data, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have, you know, either a signal or something like that. So let's find an example for that. I mean, timestamps sort of come up everywhere, right? Come up signal processing, whether you're doing data analysis, you're trying to pass yep. through a bunch of big data sets, there's timestamps everywhere. Also, not, 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 now even if you're doing if you're doing IoT stuff, you know, you can get timestamped yep. IoT data coming in. Um, so there's definitely a lot of scope to work with timestamp data. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually I wanted to use a ThingSpeak example because it's really awesome. We have a weather station um, at the office that we can check the get all the data in the MATLAB. So I just was looking for an example that showed timestamped data or doing something that seems interesting. There's a nice little plot. And I know it's an example. Um, so 
if we want to, you know, I'm actually in the MATLAB documentation. I typed it from, um, you know, the toolbar here. And, you know, this actually is installed with MATLAB. So I have it here. I don't even have an internet connection. I know sometimes like secret military facilities like don't have internet or whatever. So uh, you can actually just install the documentation too. Um, and like you saw before, I could just open the live script. Oh, <laughs> I was working on it earlier. Okay, discard my edits. So I'm not cheating. And so it actually takes me right to the directory I need to be in. So that's something that we should talk about pretty quickly, but um, we didn't have to worry about it when we were in MATLAB online, we were just where we were. <laughs> um, but if you're trying to say, you know, bring in your CSV file, like was asked before, or you have uh, other kinds of files, you need to be in that directory or that directory needs to be on the path. Basically MATLAB needs to be able to find it somehow, right? And so um, there's a, uh, here it is, <laughs> there's set path. And so that way, if you have, you know, directories that a whole bunch of people are using at, at work or at school, you can just add it there and you won't ever have to worry about like navigating to that directory. So, um, you know, you can also, obviously you can navigate just by using like normal, I don't know, windows -y things. Um, so let's quickly just run this. I was going to, I actually don't even want to run this example. I just, I like it. I think it's a good one. We'll put the chat uh, or put a link in the chat, but I wanted to use some of the um, nice functionality for uh, importing and just using um, the interactive tools. So we have a CSV file, perfect for uh, the chat <laughs> question. And we don't even have to just start by using some import uh, function. We can just double click on it. And it always opens up on my other window. So I'll move it over. And, you know, basically you can see exactly what you would see in a spreadsheet um, kind of form or like a text file, lots of options. So um, especially with Excel or spreadsheets, you can even use that kind of syntax. <clears throat> and then we, we showed earlier about just, you know, basically vectors and matrices for numbers. But you notice here there's, you know, text for the day of the week and the date. And so uh, it even shows here what type they're going to be brought in as. So these are just numbers. That'll be a double. Remember, that's the default. And then um, it's recognizing that this is a repeated string, so categorical and date time. And so you don't have to worry about all these different uh, details. But just know that if you want to keep everything together, uh, you could use a table or a timetable or um, you know, one of those kinds of things that is so you can kind of operate it on it more like a spreadsheet. So I'll just click around. Uh, this is a good time since somebody brought up uh, missing data. You know, if you had a whole bunch of different things, like maybe um, you have 9999 and that should be treated with NAN, you can add different conditions to do that. So uh, we can just click, it'll just import it. There was, yeah, there's a little note here. And then I want to point out, like, I think this is one of the most important things about getting started is that you can just click around and try things and then oftentimes generate uh, a script or a function so you don't have to just start from scratch. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, I, I, I can see how this will be helpful, especially if you're working with multiple different CSV files that are of the same type. So you just have a script that, you know, or a, or a function that you call, just feed it in that name and it's it's gonna do what you want it to do. So that's what exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so you can call it over and over again and it does all the things that you've selected in the app. And so this is the same, and we, we won't have time to go through all these. I think m many of our streams and many of our other videos that Connell and I are uh, in um, have other, you know, machine learning and robotics and things like that, that use all of these, but this is the best place to start. Just try stuff, click around. Um, so, yeah, and, and, okay. and, and as, as you mentioned, most apps generate code. Like we cannot stress that enough, you know? So, so, so typically if you want to start writing code, it's almost you, it almost makes sense to open up an app and try stuff out, you know, click, click through it and uh, just generate the code from there. So, you know, yep. writing stuff. <laughs> exactly. And so this is the, just to kind of uh, clarify, you know, this is how I would do it. If I, if I, you know, want to just start writing the code, it'll just bring it right in, you know, same way. Um, but <clears throat> again, may, much easier, especially if you've never seen the data before, you can just select all that. Um, and like Con Connell mentioned, <laughs> sorry, I'm like losing it already. Um, <laughs> You know, you can just click on stuff, right? You just try things out. Um, you mentioned about plotting. You know, maybe we want to just see. Uh, this is bicycle counts for Cambridge and Boston. Um, maybe we just want to look at this over time and see what the total. Oh, look at this! Cute. 
Nice. <laughs> I didn't see that. I just I just downloaded uh, 20B. It just came out the other day, uh, the newest release. So it even shows you some nice uh, tips for how to do things. Pretty yeah, cool. We, 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 we had a question on 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 3D plots and with, you know so 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 typically if you, if you if you have your variables in your workspace you can select it like how Heather's doing right now and then uh, if you go to the plots tab up there you should see all the possible plots uh, that you could use with that particular data you know with, with, with that piece of data so if it's yep. 3D or whatever you can just go and 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 try it out in the plots tab up there. And this is where I spent it, like, probably seems like I know what I'm doing um, once the videos are created. <laughs> but whenever I'm just working with data sets for the first time, I just select things and look around and try things and see what happens. So uh, just since we were talking about 3D, you know, we have plot 3, stem 3, scatter 3. Like, these are the kinds of the, that's sort of the um, pattern. And, uh, oh, well, that doesn't look very good, but this is how we figure it out, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, maybe that's fun. So let's just, <laughs> I wanted to talk about like, quickly the syntax. So it actually, every time I select something, it actually gives me the code. So then if I want to go back, I could add this into the script. I could, um, you know, just create a new script. And just like the plot functions, you know, if you have three variables, you just, it's just X, Y, Z. Um, so that's really helpful. Uh, the other thing right here, if you notice, you know, maybe this looks confusing if you haven't seen it before. Um, our table is called bicycle counts and it's extracting the data from total. So that's what this syntax is, the, the dot. So that's one thing I really want to make sure we get through this uh, before we end because like that's something that's really awesome in MATLAB. Oh crap, I should add a title to my uh, plot maybe. <laughs> I just also wanted to mention that you can add, you can do all these interactive things here. So if you wanted to add, um, oh geez, here we go, X labels, Y labels, you know, you don't have to just start typing. Um, you know, you can just do that. So uh, don't be afraid, click on stuff and it'll show you the syntax. So uh, because I have this open, so I talked about, you know, that sort of table syntax, you know, maybe we want to just bring this out. If you just click on the variable editor, you can do quite a lot. So here uh, I want to create a new numeric array. And then I'll also show just quickly uh, oops, a new table. Losing it. Here we go. Uh, just because I wanted to show some of the syntax, right? So if you look, this is um, I'm selecting, you know, multiple columns. So this is three and four. So those are the columns that I selected before. If we had done something, let me do something like this. There we go. So you notice there's I'm getting uh, rows one through three and columns three and four. So that's the, the basic um, indexing in MATLAB is uh, using the number values. And if you're using a table, you can use the text as well, like the column headers. Um, and the colon operator, just like we saw with the vector creating vectors, that tells it, you know, use one, two, and three. So if we had just wanted to do, uh, say, you know, two and four, we can create a vector like that. So, um, at least that that gives you a lot of um, you know it's basically row comma column you know you're you're pretty good shape from there and then if you want all of them you just use the the colon object. So we we have a question on on managing uh, recorded data. So do you need SQL to do that or can you just pop that into MATLAB directly? Um, say I, I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing you're talking about accessing data from like a REST you know API or something like that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, that's a Good question. So let's see what we get if we look at the doc. So I, I know, but I want to show how yeah. to <laughs> show how to do it. Um, so you know, depending on what you're trying to do, uh, oftentimes web read is the sort of catch-all for um, you know any kind of uh, web APIs. So we can even share some examples. There's a couple of uh, at least that I have on my GitHub repo, um, and there's a lot of options for like security information and. Um, things like that. Uh, and, and this will also, you know, if you have data in a, a web page or, you know, if you just want to scrape the whole thing, it's, it's again, kind of the catch all for that. <clears throat> if there's something that's more specific, like, um, I don't know if I have database toolbox, but, oh yeah, I do. So if you have like a database, I mean, you said SQL, maybe I'm hearing things wrong because I hear you twice. <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> there's also, if you have the database toolbox, you can also 
um, do this in a very interactive way and select the data that you want. Um, but yeah, generally web read is a good way to do that. And I'll also mention that there are lots of great functionalities on the um, add -on, in the file exchange for this stuff because you know certain uh, file types are very specific or certain databases you know organized different ways. So you you'll often find um, you know code that you can use there. Um, I, I want to actually just close the discussion on indexing with one really important uh, indexing method. So. What is this called by sick accounts? There it is. Here we go. So let's look at our full table. So this is, I'm using the live script. There was a question about what the difference is between a live script, like a dot MLX and dot M. Um, you know, you'll, you'll see both dot uh, MLX, this live script was introduced in 2016. And uh, there's a lot of functionality that's just really, it integrates the plotting, the, you know, workspace and interactivity. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, other editor, I guess, that uh, is the plain text editor, we call it. So, you know, that just doesn't uh, have these drop downs and things like that. No big deal. So, so um, just stop it right there because we had a question on that. Um, there was a person asking about what is the difference between a dot M and a dot MLX and if there was a if there's a benefit to using one or the other. I think uh, just from personal experience, my my biggest benefit of using live scripts or the dot mlx is that you can export as html or export as a pdf which uh, I, I used to do cfd when i was in grad school and I had to write a bunch of reports with a lot of code um, and i spent a lot of time copy pasting plots into a word document or something like that so that if the live script was around at the time i would have you know they would have saved me I don't know, six hours per project i guess so so, so yes if you're if you're looking to, to create reports or html documentation um uh, the live script is definitely the way to go um uh, yeah <laughs> yeah definitely and see you can see that already i'm just kind of messing around like clicking on things and i think <clears throat> that's the other one for me too it's like it uh, keeps track of your plots and your um so it's nice for documentation like connell mentioned and even um if you don't want to export it, it it retains all the stuff that was there so all the plots that you had and all these things and um you can like i just selected you know from this histogram and it actually shows exactly what I was going to show, uh, how to you know select data based on a condition. So you know again, just more helpful kinds of things. And the uh, live editor task thing that I showed, it just sort of combines all these different environments. So um, I'll tend to use uh, the uh, traditional editor when I'm running kind of a I don't know more hardcore code where I don't really need to share output or I don't want to necessarily like especially deep learning models where I'm running for like six days or something. I'm just like shh. Just, just run in your the least amount of overhead as possible. I don't, I don't care, yeah. you know. <laughs> so I think those are, and also if you just prefer like sort of the plain text um, environment, that's how that. Yeah, there's there's definitely some graphical, you know, there's some there's some overhead that you are you're sacrificing when when you're using the the, the, the rich text editor and stuff like that. So it, I I guess it, it comes down to personal preference, but th there are definitely a bunch of things where. Uh, the live script is the way to go, you know, especially if you're trying some stuff out, you want to document code, uh, definitely live scripts are the way to go for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, cool. So that's, that's uh, you know, I guess that covers kind of the live script stuff. Just to close out the indexing conversation, uh, this is what I wanted to mention. You know, if we wanted to get all of the bicycle counts greater than or equal to 318 or 300, that's how we would do it. We just type it right in. Oops. Um, and then we can copy it, change it if we want. Um, logical operators, you can find all of this in the doc, but it's sort of your traditional, you know, we want uh, this and this, you know, and we talked about is missing already. So um, we can uh, share more examples for more on that. I just want to check my notes and, oh, actually, yeah. We've been using scripts so far. I just wanted to comment on functions because we, we've called functions, you know, we're calling a function right here. Um, and in this example, it even shows calling a function that is defined by the user. So this is a great one. I think this gives you a really good um, idea of all the different syntax and the different options, especially with missing or messy data, like we said. And um, somewhere <laughs> I will find what I was trying to say. Okay, here we go. We're, get, we're <laughs> reaching the end, so maybe I'm just completely losing it. <laughs> I thought there was a helper function in this one, so maybe not. 
Um, but if we wanted to just create a function, that's okay. We don't need a helper function. Um, we could just say new function. Because I just wanted to point out, you know, with our script, we have everything in our workspace. Um, we might not want that. We might not want to have every single step. We might just want to return one output and have it operate kind of like the sign function. We want somebody else to just call it like that. So uh, this is basically, you know, the syntax. So whatever you want to do happens here. This is the outputs and the inputs, just like you've called it. And then you have your function keyboard. So not too big of a deal. And if you're, uh, you know, more, if you're coming from other languages, you can have, you know, it's a fully uh, fleshed out class system, object system. There's a lot of great functionality there. Um, so just wanted to point out the different modes of operation, basically. Um, all right, whew, let's see. Anything else that we didn't talk about? I, I think I think we've we've covered most of what we had in uh, in mind. It was it was good. You know, we, we had some we had some technical difficulties and stuff, but I think we I think we got through that pretty well. Uh, yeah. th 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 there is one question I've seen I've seen a lot of people commenting in the chat on on us doing a Simulink live stream. So yes, we sure. will we, we we will do a Simulink live stream in the future. Um, uh, but, but actually, it, it's it, a couple of weeks. I think um, we'll we'll get back to you on the date. We'll make yeah. sure we get that out to you. So that's yeah, that's one of the great. Well, you're. You you talk about that. You're a similar guy, yeah, and, and then and, and then the, 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 there was another question on asking uh, on what is the difference between MATLAB and Simulink. I think basically the, the the basic difference is MATLAB is a textual programming language, so you're writing code, you know, like you would in in, in another language. But as in Simulink, you're doing the same thing but using something called its block diagram. So if you're a control systems engineer, control systems engineers like um, you know, we, 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 we think sort of in block diagrams because everything is, you know, every, everything is a block diagram from the time we start studying. Um, so, so, so Simulink works um, in block diagrams. You can see Heather's pulled up, uh, pulled up Simulink on the screen. Um, you essentially can can do most of the same things that you can do in MATLAB. MATLAB has a little has a little more functionality than, than, than Simulink just because of the of the inherent nature. But but the way Simulink works is Simulink is used for um, for, for simulations. So you you can you feed in a differential equation, and Simulink's got these very robust um, numerical solvers that can that can. I, I, one of my favorite quotes on Simulink is something that a customer said. He said. Um, Simulink eats differential equations for breakfast, which is which is my favorite quote of all time. Uh, but 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 yeah, it's essentially you you use whenever you're running a simulation, you're solving some sort of differential equation. And Simulink's uh, got these solvers, kind of like ODE forty five is in MATLAB. There is an ODE forty five in Simulink as well, but there are a lot more. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely stick it on for a, for a Simulink uh, for Simulink on ramp in the next few weeks. Uh, yeah, definitely. Know, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> Smash it. But yeah, I mean that's the that's the best way to keep up to date. And we're gonna have um, Ed. This he's a really big Simulink expert, um, and you know we'll we'll talk about all those questions. And of course the documentation. Even you saw the start page has a whole bunch of examples. This was one I wrote, is which is obviously not very um, sophisticated, <laughs> but. I like blinking um, LEDs, so what can I say? Um, that's awesome. So I, I guess, is there any other questions before we close things out? I think, um, I mean, I definitely would highly, you know, we've talked just about some of the fundamentals here, but the uh, trainings um, that, you know, you can see, well, here, um, you know, these on ramps are free. Again, you don't have to have a MATLAB license or access at all, like just, you know, go for it and you can learn deep learning, machine learning and get a sense. It's just like we saw uh, basically using MATLAB online in the back end. Um, and then there's a lot more thorough, you know, classes with certifications and things like that. If you really want to, you know, go to town, but really the best way, you know, look at the doc, RTFM um, and, you know, check out videos, subscribe, you know, try things and uh, don't be afraid. Click on stuff, get get mistakes, uh, make mistakes, get the errors, and the errors will help you hopefully. Yeah. And also one last thing, you know, we kind of hinted at the community, but there's so many wonderful. Um, if you have questions, obviously you can ask us, and we can reach out on social media. Um, but you know, this is a great way. You know, if you have questions, like some of us, you know, when we're bored at work, we'll just go onto MATLAB Answers, and you know, uh, you can find a lot here. And file exchange, we kind of showed. Um, there's the whole world is here to help you uh, get started or carry on with your skills. <laughs> so 
I guess, yeah, I guess we'll um, we'll end it there. Don't be afraid to reach out. We have our uh, social media info here. And again, subscribe, you know, interact here in the comments. Um, you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch on any questions you have. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with Simulink and more. So, you know, keep up to date. Thank you so much. This was awesome. And I really appreciate sticking through uh, the early issues, uh, technical difficulties. That's life, right? It's, it wouldn't be a live stream if there wasn't something going on. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see, see you, you again. See you again soon.